this idea of blame and who gets blamed yeah. if uh, if if uh, Kamala Harris loses or if Trump loses, whatever, right? Yes. You know, do we blame the black person? Do we blame the Muslim? Do we? Blame Trump says he's going to blame the Jews, but that didn't make more than half a day headlines. Again, mind boggling. I covered it Imagine here. Imagine if Harris said that. Imagine yeah. if Harris said that or Biden said that. It's mind boggling to me. But I feel like there are people out here who say that if Kamala loses, just like they said when Hillary lost, that it's the third party candidate, that it's Butch Ware and Jill Stein's fault, that it's Cornell West's fault, that it's Claudia De La Cruz's fault. My issue, and I'm a, I'm a Green Party member yeah. uh, for uh, two and a half decades now, I voted for Jill Stein in Pennsylvania. You're going to murder me. You know, um, I don't regret that. In 2016, I voted for Jill Stein in You have no regrets. No, I don't. I, I don't. Um, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. But but I but I, I want to hear you more okay. on this. Um, but I but I absolutely voted for Jill Stein. I thought it was the right choice. I thought it was the principal choice. I, I campaigned for Jill Stein. I went around the country for Jill Stein. Um and I felt like instead of saying Hillary Clinton should have run a better campaign, Hillary Clinton should have addressed black voters, Hillary Clinton should have spent a little less time in Florida, which she was obsessed with toward the end, and not these other places. Instead yeah. of saying Hillary Clinton wasn't a good candidate or the Democrats stole from Bernie, none of that stuff comes up. It's yeah. just those 50,000 people that voted green that might have otherwise stayed home, that might have yes. otherwise voted Trump, that might have otherwise yep. done these other things. You're the fault of American democracy. There's not a day that goes by that me, uh, Eddie Glaude, I don't know Susan Sarandon, but I would imagine her team yeah, yeah. tag with me all the time. Every time something bad happens, they say, are you happy now, Mark? You're responsible for abortion. You're responsible for no affirmative action. It's mind boggling how we think about this. So I think it's unfair. So I, I, here's my response to go back to how I started the show. I walk a tightrope on this stuff. People, it makes me unpopular with some folks. Yes. But I try and walk and chew gum at the same time. I believe that Hillary Clinton was a bad candidate in 2016. She ran a bad campaign. She didn't visit Wisconsin. She said some awful stuff. And she wasn't the greatest candidate to take on Donald Trump in what was supposed to be a change year. No one wanted a Clinton. Uh, having said all that, by the way, she won the popular vote, to be fair to her. In any other country, we would be finishing a second Clinton term, right? In any other country in the world. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't, for, if not for the electoral vote, we shouldn't forget that fact, right? She won whatever it was, millions more votes. Really yeah. but, but for the system we had, she ran a bad campaign. Knowing the electoral college, she should have put more attention in these swing states. And I agree with that. Having said that, I also understand why liberals get mad and say, when it was such a consequential race and such a clear choice, how could you have the Greens saying they're all the same? And I interviewed Jill Stein in 2016, before I interviewed her and Butch recently. I interviewed her in 2016 for our show, Upfront. I'm going to call it our show. Upfront in 2016. And I said to her at the time, and I went back and I watched the clip recently. I said, if there is a swing voter in Pennsylvania who says, Jill Stein, you can't, you know, you can't win the presidency. I support the green goals, but in this state, who should I pick, Clinton or Trump? Would you say go to Clinton? She said, no, they're both the same. They're both as bad. One's, there's no lesser evils. That for me is a problem. That's what I'm going to call out. I'm not going to blame green voters or say greens cost election, but I do think it's disingenuous for third party candidates to say, well, they're all the same when they're not. And actually, let's take Cornell as an example. Cornell is running this time, and I'm good friends with Cornell. I disagree with uh, his position this time around. But Cornell also in 2020 did not run as a third party candidate. And he said, I'm not going to run as a third party candidate, and I'm not going to support the Greens because we need an anti fascist alliance, right? We need an anti fascist alliance. He said, neoliberalism is bad, fascism is worse, right? I liked that, Cornell. That is my own view. Right. So, he, I think you would say when I saw Joe Biden these last four years, it turns out they're pretty fascist too. Uh, but hold on. Pre-October 7th, Joe Biden ran the most center-left president since LBJ on a domestic level. That's just a I'm fact. Saying, it, it's not a logical inconsistency from Cornell. He's saying True. they, 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 they Well, it is a logical wrong. inconsistency. We, 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 Cornell's not here to defend himself, but I've asked him this on my show. Yeah. If you think Trump was bad in 20, he's much worse in 24. So that I don't get, like Donald Trump of 2024 is more fascistic, more violent, more racist, more threatening, more unhinged, more unstable than Donald Trump in 2020 and 2016. That's just an objective reality. But to go back to my point about like the blame, I don't believe in the blame game. I did a long video for Zateo. People can watch it. I think a million people watched it on Instagram where I said, direct to camera to Vice President Harris, if you lose, don't you dare blame Muslims in Michigan. Yes, I love Look it. In the mirror. Look in the mirror. It's on you. You've had every chance to do the bare minimum. Nobody's asking you to abandon support for Israel. Nobody's asking you to support ICC warrants against Netanyahu. We're just saying, put some conditions on aid. Make a ceasefire happen with the leverage you have. Put a Palestinian on stage at the DNC, right? These are kind of minimum basic. If you can't even do that, 
then it's your it's on you when you lose the Muslim vote in Michigan, right? So I'm very clear about where the blame lies. Politicians have the blame. Nobody nobody's owed a vote, right? They don't own any votes. I'm with you on that. Having said that, again, walk and chew gum. Sorry to be the you know guy. voters also have to take responsibility. Too many people tell me, Mark. Well, you know what? Doesn't matter to me. I'm voting green. Uh, whoever wins, nothing to do with me. Well, actually it is, right? Because you still live in the United States of America. You're still going to want to organize and be active over the next four years. You still care about Palestinians even after November 2024. So actually you do need to give a shit about what's coming down the line. And this idea, I think a lot of people, and this is where the debate comes down to, I don't see voting as a declaration of faith. It is not my shahada, right? It is something pragmatic and practical that I do. I, I, you know, the, the line that uh, Ole Yemi Olegurin and others have used very eloquently, which is you're basically choosing your weakest opponent. We don't like either of them, but I want the weaker person in office, the person I can influence, pressure, lobby, move. That let, me, not, let me ask you, let me back AOC you. and Cory Bush. I think Cory Bush said it on up front with you just the other day. From a from a moral perspective, nobody wants to vote for the genociders. From a strategic perspective, where are you going to have more luck in the future pushing people? But, but do you have no moral non-starters? I mean, I, I, because I, I get that argument, right? Which is, look, they're all genociders. They're all imperialists. They're all neoliberals. Yeah. They're all corporate candidates, whatever. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I do have morals, but I do have moral lines, but I, 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 I hate the way, and sorry, I'm going to be very unpopular here. I do not like the way that people have just suddenly woken up in 2024 and said, now it's all about morality. What about all the previous elections? Muslims voted for Bill Clinton happily in 2000 and in 92 and 96. In 96, Bill Clinton was presiding over the deaths of hundreds of thousands of children in Iraq. People, UN officials were calling that genocide. Madeleine Albright was like, whatever, right? It's worth it. Yeah, but, but, you, but you can't but, say, well, you, you made the wrong choice before, so you have that's to- That's not a wrong choice. choice. It's about every American president to quote Norm Chomsky as a war criminal who should be at Nuremberg. If right, that's but, but, but don't vote at all. Some, so, so, don't so, vote so, at all, then. So, so, for example, if, if, if Kamala Harris right now yeah. were to have the right position on Palestine, if yeah. she were to have the yeah. right position on yes. Lebanon, if she were yes. to say, not only do I want to condition yes. aid, I'm going to suspend aid. Yes. You know, I, I'm I'm going to say that we need uh, we need yes. to end ethno states everywhere. If she yes. did all those right things, if, if if she were had a more progressive tax vision, yes. if she had a different position on fracking, if she if she okay. were basically your check the box, I love yes. all these things, but she believed fundamentally that being Muslim is wrong, or she fundamentally believed that women were inferior, or she fundamentally yeah. believed. What's your question? What's your question, Mark? Could you not say, hey, that's a moral non-starter for me, so, so I can't vote? So, so my problem there is, Mark, it's not a referendum, right? It's not Brexit. If you're telling me I'm going on November 5th to say whether I like Harris or don't like Harris, I'm voting don't like. If right. you're saying I'm going to the referendum to say, should we support Kamala Harris or not support Kamala Harris, I'm going to say not support because she's not done on Gaza. That is not what we're voting on. We're voting on a binary choice. The other guy is Trump. You cannot wish Trump away. What bothers me is the disingenuousness of some activists who just talk about Harris as if this is a referendum on Kamala Harris. It no, is I not. It is a choice. And if George Bush Sr. was on the other choice, I'd say, let's do it. Let's punish the Dems. Put Bush Sr. in for four years. We can tolerate Bush Sr. for four years. He might even be better on the Middle East, George Bush Sr. But that is not the choice. The other choice is an unhinged, racist, white supremacist, narcissistic, mentally unbalanced, anti-Muslim, anti-Jewish guy who should be nowhere near a school board, let alone nuclear weapons, who's going to escalate the genocide in Gaza, who's probably going to start a war with Iran, who, who knows what he's going to do in, in other parts of the world, and who at home, by the way, at home, is going to undermine the democracy that allows us to speak out for Muslims and Palestinians and Arabs. These guys have a project to shut down all pro-Palestinian journalism activists. What we're doing right now is going to be under threat in 2025. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this. Oh, man, you're high. this is hyperbole. You're exaggerating. You're fear-mongering. No, no. This is what they are advertising to us. When I said in 2019, Trump loses, he won't leave. He'll cause a riot. People said, you're exaggerating. That's exactly what he did. Take these people seriously and literally. Don't take them as jokers. To go back to the point about the entertainment section of HuffPost, when these white supremacists and these fascists and Stephen Miller and General Michael Flynn and Steve Bannon, when they say what they're going to do, they are going to do it. So, okay, fair enough. So we, we have to run, but it sounds like what I'm hearing you say is it's not... You're, you're not you're not against this in general as an idea. It's it's the unique and particular, no, it's circumstance particular of Trump. choice. I'm no, telling I mean, you, it's, it's, it's if George Bush Senior was the Republican candidate, I would probably be saying, "Yes, let's do it. Get rid of the Dems. Teach them a lesson. Put the Republicans in for four years." That is not the choice. The choice is Trump and Harris. Don't shoot the messenger. I'm just telling you the choice. Right. I wish it wasn't this choice. But I, as a third party candidate, though, I can tell you, every four years they say. 
If it weren't Bush, if it were no, Bush, see that's I don't I think that's sorry, Mark. I don't agree with that. Been, no, 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 no. Every four years, I'm told that. Go back. Every four years, I'm told. I'm told. No. The sky is falling with George W. Bush. The sky is no. falling with George H. No. W. Bush. I'm going to disagree with you, Mark. Else, I'm going to give you an example. Let's go back to 2008. Barack Obama ran against John McCain. Right. Yes. John McCain famously went out of his way. I don't think he did enough, but to say, oh, this man's not an Arab. He's a good person. Remember that John McCain? Yes. The voter. Yes. Right? It was like the bare minimum. I still think it was a little racist, but people love John McCain for doing that. Barack Obama did not call John McCain a fascist. John McCain did not call Barack Obama a communist who he's going to lock up and imprison. Right. Today, Barack Obama talks about my friend John McCain. So let's, you know, the, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff did not say John McCain was a fascist to his core. John McCain's chief of staff did not come out and say he loves Hitler. I mean, let's just be real here. Donald yeah, Trump but I'm saying third party is very different to any previous Republican candidate who has come along in our lifetimes. Let's not I, normalize. Trump is an outlier for sure. I, I think it would be dishonest to say otherwise. My, my point is that in 2008, I did not vote for Barack Obama. I voted for uh, McKinney and... Uh, yeah. And, and the and, world, by the way, the world would not have fallen in if McCain had won. We, we were told it would, but we were told it would. Is my point. We were I'm told. Not sure that, I'm not sure that's true. I mean, of course, party operatives are always going to say that, but we. But this is not party operatives, right? People keep telling. I said yesterday, some a friend of mine. Well, you know, the people are saying he's a fascist. Oh, this is Democratic Party shill propaganda. Robert Paxton, America's preeminent scholar of fascism, is not a Democratic Party shill. He's a historian of fascism who spent ten years saying Trump's not a fascist. Now he says. Trump's a fascist. Sorry, fascist. it's fascism, yeah. right? This is not propaganda. This is not fear mongering. This is objective reality. And let me just say one last thing on the Green Party because people confuse my position. If you don't live in a swing state, I have no issue with voting Green. I might vote Green. Why not? You got nothing to lose. The dumb system means if I live in New York or yeah, California, you vote doesn't count anyway. If yeah, your vote doesn't count anyway. That's a whole separate discussion about the inane, inanity of American democracy as it is. If you live in Ma Ma Alabama, Mississippi, if you live in uh, you know Massachusetts, New York, California. Vote however you like. Don't vote. Who cares? It doesn't matter. If you live in a swing state and you can determine the fate of the country and the world, think long and hard about the choice. If you still want to vote green, go for, go for it. But at least think through the consequences. Don't tell me that by voting green, oh, I have clean hands or I have no responsibility for what comes next. That's bullshit. We're all citizens of this country. We're all going to have to live with the consequences of the decision that happens, whether it ends up being Harris or Trump. That's all I'm asking. Let's have an honest debate. Fair enough.